Hi, this is James Turner, and welcome to part three of our look at Language Lisp here at One Take Demos. Last time we looked at functions a little bit, and as part of that, there was kind of an implicit look at binding, but we really didn't go into it, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about binding before we move on to more in, uh, advanced topics. So if you, rem if you remember, well, if I'm typing in right buffer here, if I say def and foo, which takes a an argument A, and then I say, ah, I'm going to give you a new uh, command we haven't used before. Print does exactly what you think it does. It prints whatever the value is. So if I say, you know, foo of four, there's an implicit uh, binding going on here, which is A is being bound to four. Uh, now, if you're familiar with other computer languages, then you're kind of familiar with the idea that if you pass an argument in and you bind it to a variable, the scoping on that is local to the function. So there's a thing you can do in Lisp, which is to just define a variable. You actually don't need to define it unless you're going to compile it, but you can say def var, which is just a, a formalized way of defining a variable. You could just do a set queue and set it to a value, but def var is a little bit, bit more formal. So if we say def var age, sadly, 47, then if I just type age, it's 47. If I then say def in different age, which takes an argument of age, and I say print age, and then I say, for instance, different age 10, it's going to print 10, but if I now go look at age, it's still 47, and that's because the binding works the way you would expect it to, that it's locally bound on the stack when it's inside the function, and then when it comes out of the stack, it reverts to whatever the global variable is. And obviously, if functions call functions, it keeps pushing the value on the stack. So one way you can do a binding is, again, through just having it be a function parameter. But another way you can do it is with an explicit thing called let. So I'm going to do this outside of any program. I can say let age be 10, and then ask for what age is. And it's 10, but again, age is still 47 here. And by the way, I didn't do it explicitly before, but let me just show you that if I then say here, set queue age to be 30, again, the binding is local here. So even if I set it to a new value, it's all local to inside what the binding is. Now, let, as I said, is an explicit way to explicit way to bind things rather than just use a function parameter and the way you read this is each let clause is a pair it's the name and the value to bind it to if you don't want to bind it to a value you just want to have create a local scope you can in fact just do it without the paren without the second layer of prints in the binding value so that does the same thing, and again, because we're not setting it to a value inside here, we can only we can use it with a single layer of parens and then just set it there. And you can even mix it, so I can say uh, sex is male, and again we have to put a single quote or it'll try to evaluate male. And age without parens. Now what happens if we do that? If we don't give it a value? If you don't give it a value, it binds it to nil, which is both the empty list and falsity. So, as you can see here, in this case, we bound sex to have the value male, and we just said, and we want age to have a local context, uh, to be bound locally, to have a local scope. So, it's going to ignore this global value for age, and it's just going to use the local value of age, which by default is set to nil, if you don't give it any value. One other thing I wanted to show you in this 
episode is we haven't really dealt much with control structures. I showed you one last time without actually going over it, so I want to talk a little bit about if and loops. So if is very simple. Here's the very simple version of an if statement. And the way this reads is if, and then the first argument is the conditional. So if 3 should ever happen to equal to 4. The second argument is what to do when it's true. Third argument is what to do when it's false. In this case, all we're doing when it's true is we are returning, quote, Bob. And if it's false, we're returning, quote, Ted. So it's basically an if, then, else. Now, the one thing that's a little tricky here is that the first clause is a single item, but then all the other ones are the else. So let me give you the example, and I'll also show you why this can get a little convoluted. If equal 3, 4. Print Bob. Sorry. Bob. Otherwise, print Ted. And then print Alice. So what it's going to actually do is print Ted and Alice, except that I have a bug. Oh, you know something? This That's the way it works in list machine list, but it doesn't work that way here. They're nice about it. So let's see, four. You can't do that. It's not what we call an and rest. So it's just a single argument. So in this case, it's going to print Ted. So suppose you want to do more than one thing in either the if or the, if or the else. Well, one way to do that is to just put in a let, even if you're not going to have any values. That's kind of an interesting bug in that here. There you go. Print Ted. Got a little Alice. That'll close the let. So now you, it'll actually print two things out. Hmm. Give me a second here. Oh, right, because 3 isn't equal to 4. Thank you. So 3 is equal to 4. So there you go. It's printing both of them because I put it inside a let, so this is considered to be one argument. It Basically, we've put both of these things inside the body of the let, and the let is the if clause true for this. Um, you notice that it also returns Alice in, re in addition to printing it, because print returns as a value whatever it uh, prints. So I also just want to show you very quickly how to do a loop. Uh, Lisp actually is a very flexible um, looping construct called do, which I particularly like, because you can actually loop over two things in parallel, which is hard to do in some other languages. So the basic format is do, a starts with one, and then it's plus a one. I'm going to have to see if I remember the format of this correctly. Equal a five, print a. And I didn't. It's been a while. Oh. Wait a second. There we go. So, the format of this is do, and then you have a list of initializers, and each initializer is the name of a variable, what to start it at, and what to do every time you go through the loop, which is very similar to, say, a for, a for loop in C. The second argument is the end case. So in this case, do it until A is equal to 5, and then the body is what to do. Now, so as you see, it prints 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you hit 5 and it exits. Notice that the test is done before the body, 
so we exit when it's equal to 5 and never actually call the body. Now what makes this so powerful is that you can actually loop have two things at the same time here. So I'm going to sneak in here. I really don't like the way that does that. How do you insert? Excuse me. No. Oh, okay. You have to quote it. This is an Emacs under the covers here. So I can say B starts at 10 and goes to plus B2. Now the end condition is still only testing A, but I can go print B here. Right? And what's happening is both of these things run in parallel. So it's iterating over A, adding 1 to A, and it's iterating over B, starting in a 10, and adding 2 every time, but the end condition is still only testing A equals 5. So you can go and do things like you can walk two lists, lists at the same time. You can, as we've got here, have two variables running uh, at the same time. It's a very powerful construct, and you can run an arbitrary number of these. So that was a little look at... Uh, binding, and again, by the way, these are obviously locally bound inside the body of the do, and a few control structures. Next time around, we're going to look at some more powerful things you can do with functions, and we're going to start to talk a little bit about lists, which are obviously the major data structure in Lisp, even though we haven't really dealt with them yet. Until then, this is James Turner for One Take Demos.